Okay, in this video, we're going to be on page 202. It's the first page of note 16 of math analysis notes. Um, we're going to take a look at another way of representing things in the plane, right? So uh, we have many ways of representing points so far. We have, uh, you know, points, we have vectors, we have complex numbers. These are all ways of thinking about points in a plane. Uh, and you can do various things with them depending on which representation you're choosing to use. Now what we want to do is we want to think about um, basically another way that we can represent our points in the plane. What I want to do is I want to first show you uh, some graphs so that you have a sense of like why might you want to do this. So I set this up ahead of time. Uh, I'm on Desmos because uh, it's a little easier than GeoGebra to graph polar on De Well, It's a lot easier to graph polar on Desmos than it is to graph it on um, GeoGebra. So I set this up. Uh, what I did was I clicked on uh, my face is in the way. I clicked on this, and then in the grid, and instead of this, I clicked on this. Um, and that was actually all the setup that I needed, right? So I just clicked that. You can zoom in now using the pluses and minuses over here. Um, so let's take a look at some curves that are polar representations. So here's one. So this is called a rose curve. Uh, presumably, people thought this looked like a rose. I think they should be daisy curves, probably would have been a better choice because um, I think they look more like daisies but uh, so here's a polar curve let's make a minor change right so I'm changing from sine to cosine changing from seven theta to two-thirds theta and then three here um, and look at the difference like that is a, a stark difference between these graphs and I just made a minor change right I changed uh, the coefficient of theta from and let's let's do this. Let's make fewer changes. Let's change this to seven uh, to sine rather seven, uh, and let's change this to five. Uh, so now the only difference is the coefficient of theta. And here we get this like weird. It still looks pretty floral to me. Um, and here, so these are uh, it. Small changes in polar curves are going to result in huge changes on the graph. Um, and we want to figure out like what's going on with these. Let's take a look at a few more. So here. Uh, 2 minus 5 cosine theta. So you know what um, y equals 2 minus 5 cosine of x looks like, right? It does not look like this, but we're going to find out that there's a very clear relationship between those graphs, um, and that's going to be the key to us producing this kind of graph by hand. Uh, this one, honestly, I don't even know if this is graphing this right. I've never typed this sort of thing in before. I just went for it. Look at that. That's like a pretty neat graph. It looks like um, like almost a double hyperbola type situation uh, if you've studied conic sections. So it looks like there's, I don't know, like y equals x and y equals negative x kind of almost look like they would be um, axes of symmetry, sort of. I don't really know. I just typed in some random things. And then this one you're going to recognize. This looks a lot like the infinity sign. This is called a lemnus gate. This is the basis of the infinity sign. Um, and you can see I did 8 radical cosine of 2 theta eight here, and if you look, eight here, but also eight here. So what is going on with the polar grid? Uh, you can also see these angles, pi over six, pi over three. It looks like our system that we're gonna use is based on um, angles that we rotate, like the, and you're, they're familiar from the unit circle. They're all unit circle angles are like your, your key grid lines. And then uh, it looks like we just have a bunch of concentric circles that are telling us a distance from the origin. And that's really what's happening. So this is kind of an intro to what the graphs look like. And now let's take a look at the notes um, and see what we can do. So we'll go through. This first page has a lot of writing on it. I just want to highlight some of the things um, to make sure you, you notice them. So the first thing is uh, this system, the polar coordinate system. So it's a different way. It's the same xy plane uh, at all your points. Any point that you can write using uh, x and y you can write using polar coordinates. Um, but the graphs you can get from polar are, are arguably way more interesting than the graphs that you're gonna get from rectangular. Um, so there is a little bit of terminology that's slightly different. So we have renamed the origin, the pole. So it, like the North Pole, the South Pole, it's just the pole, right? And then the positive x-axis, we're now gonna call the polar axis. And that's actually the entire thing. So everything will be based on a rotation from the positive x-axis, just like when you were learning um, angles in the plane, right? The rows based on a rotation from the positive x-axis. Um, and then a distance from the origin, but we're calling the origin the pole. 
I'll be honest with you, I pretty much still call it the x-axis and the origin because when you actually end up using this stuff, like later in calculus, uh, you have to go back and forth between x, y, and polar like so interchangeably that you never really end up uh, thinking about it too much, but be aware of terminology so that you sound uh, intelligent when you talk about these things because that's also one of your objectives in life is to at least sound like you know what you're talking about. Um, so, woo, what are we doing? All right, so points written in polar form are very weird, okay? So they are written as r theta. So what is r? r is gonna be the distance from the origin, and it can be a directed distance, and what do I mean by that? The distance could be positive, meaning go forward, or negative, meaning go backwards, right? So if, you're, um, if you were to stand up right now, and I said, take three steps forward, that would be r is positive three. If I said, take three steps backwards, that would be r equals negative three. You're still facing forward, but you're going backwards. So that's what a negative r is gonna do for us. Theta, still just gonna be uh, the angle measured from the positive x-axis. So the positive x-axis is called polar axis. The origin is now called the pole. Our ordered pairs are r and theta. What's very, very weird about this to me um, it may not bother you. Theta is the independent variable. So I tell you theta, you tell me r. That's how it should work. Um, usually ordered pairs are the opposite, right? X, Y ordered pairs. I tell you X, um, you tell me Y, right? X is the independent, Y is the dependent. In polar, it's r theta. R depends on theta. I give you theta, you give me r. So that's kind of a weird thing. Uh, as you noticed on Desmos, the grid that we deal with looks very different. So I'm gonna jump ahead to here. Uh, you can see around the edges, we have uh, angles. So typically you'll see the unit circle angles, but notice actually there are a couple that are not labeled. Those are like the wannabe unit circle angles, right? So unit circle, we really should have been counting by pi over 12s, but we didn't. Um, we actually counted by like weird things, which is why there are weird gaps, right? So if you look at this, this could have been pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, but it reduces. 3 pi over 12, but it reduces. 4 pi over 12, but it reduces. 5 pi over 12 doesn't reduce. The ones that don't reduce, they don't have nice sines and cosines, which is why they're not like famous angles. Um, but our angles are making up uh, radial lines, radial, like the radius of a circle, radial. Um, and then we have to decide on some sort of unit of measure. Uh, we can count by ones for radius of concentric circles. We can count by twos, count by whatever you want, right? So same as in X and Y. So when we plot, I think of it as sort of a physical process. So when we are plotting points in polar, we're gonna do these two things. You stand and you rotate the angle, and then you walk the distance you should walk in the direction that you should walk. So let's actually plot some points and see what I mean by that. Okay, so um, for the first point, right? Theta is pi over six. So you're gonna rotate and face pi over six. So you're facing this way, that's pi over six. And then R is four. So you're gonna put a point four units out. So what should we count by? Let's count by, uh, I think ones will work. So I'm gonna say that one, I'll label this as two, as four, as six. Then we have seven, and then if we needed it, we would have eight. I don't think we'll need it, I hope. All right, so I've rotated pi over six, so that's this way. And then I go out four units, so I'm gonna be on the circle that has a radius of four, and this is the point A. And that's all it takes to plot polar points. So you have to think about it a little bit. And then there's some that you're like not going to be super familiar with. So for example, here, first thing we're going to do is rotate 7 pi over 12. So where is 7 pi over 12? 7 pi over 12, so it's uh, 5 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12. So 7 pi over 12 is here. And now I need to go out 7 units. So I'm facing 7 pi over 12. I'm gonna walk forward along that line, seven units, get to here, this is the point B. Okay, the next one, six, zero. So keep in mind, zero is an angle measure. It is not 
a y coordinate. So you phase zero. So that's I should probably like vary up the colors. I don't really know. Do I even have enough colors for this? So we're gonna phase zero. So you're facing this way. And then we're gonna walk out. I'm gonna keep using this color though for R. You're gonna walk out six units. So you're facing zero and you walk six units. That's gonna put you right there. And we kind of covered that up. So that's C. Uh, the next one's kind of challenging, right? Because uh, the angle is five radians. So what is five radians? So uh, I can do, what can I do? I'm gonna switch to a calculator and I'm gonna convert that to degrees. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, so here, don't even worry about that. Um, we're gonna do five times 180 over pi. So 286.5 degrees. Okay, so that's like, that's a multiple of 15, right? Like 285 divided by 15 is 19. Um, so let's go back. Now, why did I do 15? Well, I did 15 because uh, 180 divided by 12 is 15. So 19 pi, or what can we do? So uh, two, if this is 270 and I need to go like another, uh, like almost 15, let's say that we're facing, I mean, we're just gonna eyeball this. Let's say we're facing like here, right? We're kind of facing there. And then we're gonna go out five units because that's what it says to do. So five units, uh, so one, two, three, four, five. And I forget, I think it was like a little more. So this, so this would be like point D. All right, so I mean, it's not really that bad. Um, the next one is gonna be pi over three. So pi over three is our angle. So we rotate pi over three, and then we're gonna go negative three. So you're facing pi over three, you're facing into the first quadrant, but I just told you to walk backwards. So what quadrant are you gonna walk into? If you walk backwards while facing into the first quadrant, you will always walk into the third quadrant. So I have a problem following lines through the origin. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this like that so that I can see I'm still on that line. And now negative three, instead of walking into the first quadrant, I go one, whoa, whoa. Okay, I go one, ah, here we go. One, two, three. So three, right here. I think that's the point E. Okay, the next one, negative two pi over three. Well, what is negative two pi over three coterminal with? Negative two pi over three is coterminal with four pi over three. We just highlighted that. That's actually, I am having a lot of problems with my zoom in here. That's this, right? So negative two pi over three and then positive five. So I'm facing the third quadrant. And because R is positive, I walk forward into the third quadrant. So if that was one, two, three, four, five is gonna be here. So this is the point F and we got it. All right, what about three pi over two? And uh, three pi over two is the angle. So you always go the angle first. So three pi over two, uh, new color, I guess. Let's say here, that's, I mean, it's a different color, but it's very subtle. And then 11 halves, so that's 5.5. .5. That's gonna be here, I suppose. So that's the point G. And then look at the next one. So the next one, theta is, I am like out of good colors. I'm gonna use a bad color. Theta is pi over two. So we rotate this way, but R is negative. So instead of going forward, we go backwards. If I'm walking backwards while facing pi over two, I'm walking along three pi over two, right? So I'm gonna take five and a half steps backwards along pi over two, which actually is gonna put me at exactly the same spot that I was just on. I'm gonna get another point here, which is really important to think about. So this is a, a new idea. Polar representations of points are not unique. So what does that mean? That means that if the angles are coterminal, 
Um, and then the, well, so there's a lot that that actually means. Uh, but for example, if I had done uh, pi over six, four, right? So uh, it's, you face pi over six and you go out four. What if I had said negative four, seven pi over six? So you're gonna face seven pi over six. So you're facing this direction, but you're going negative three. So instead of walking along seven pi over six into the third quadrant, you walk backwards along pi over six in the first quadrant, you'll end up at the point A again. It's not unique. So this is like a really big deal. And furthermore, uh, this is an important fact. Both R and theta could be negative. And we need to understand how to interpret those. So I'm going to come back in the next video and we will talk a little bit more about that. But this is just a very general overview. Um, plotting the points, if you know the unit circle, not bad at all. Um, you always rotate first, then you walk. If R is positive, walk forward. If R is negative, walk backwards, but keep facing forwards. Face forwards, walk backwards when R is negative. All right, be back in the next video to keep going on this. Hope you're finding these helpful.